Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for this live online event. I am Chris Miller. I am the Director of Marketing at Alibi Security, and we are super excited that you guys have joined us today. Uh, today, we've got an awesome topic that's near and dear to my heart as a marketer, um, and I assume that everybody that's attending here is ready to learn a great deal of information and more importantly, position yourself for growth. Um, you know, today we're going to be covering Digital Marketing 101, and we're going to be covering a lot of great topics that will help you understand and build a digital foundation for growth for your business. You know, as a, as a marketer, just dealing with all the traditional layers of marketing can sometimes be tough, and in the last 10 years, as the digital ecosystem has expanded and evolved, it's become even more complex to kind of manage and um, really understand how to best position yourself in the digital landscape so you're found, so you create awareness, so you're really getting in front of the right audiences at the right time. So as part of our commitment to our dealer partners, we want to bring you guys the education information you guys need in order to establish a really credible online um, uh, presence and give you the, the tools you need in order to really position yourself for growth for, for the future. That's our commitment to you. We're here to support you. We're here to bring you those tools and resources that we believe will impact your business. So it's really exciting to us that we've got a special guest today, John Aguilar. Uh, he's a longtime friend of the company. Um, and he's going to share with you a tremendous amount of information. Uh, John actually runs three different digital agencies here in Austin. He's been involved in the digital landscape and really on the forefront of creating solutions for small and mid-sized business owners just like you guys for the last 10 years. Um, he's really pioneered uh, solution sets uh, that help uh, build digital networks, and really create integrated marketing solutions for small and mid-sized business owners. And I know that's a lot of like mumbo jumbo marketing talk, but John, as he dives deep into the topic today, will really help you understand how he helps small and mid-sized businesses uh, establish and maintain a digital presence that helps them grow, that helps them get found in, in, the, in, the, digital, uh, in the digital marketplace. So, uh, before I let John hand this over to John, um, as you guys listen to the presentation, as you hear John giving you guys uh, great information, if you have questions, make sure you use the Q&A feature down in the bottom of the screen in Zoom, and we'll tackle those Q&A questions at the very end, okay? So without any further ado, you, you know, you, don't, you, got, uh, you got me talking, I know you're here for somebody else, so... Uh, let me introduce John Aguilar. John, welcome. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'll let you go through the agenda and then uh, sure. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, th thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate everyone um, allowing me to attend here. Obviously, uh, this is a, a big topic for me, uh, owning three different agencies, doing this over a decade. These components that I'm going to go through today on the agenda these are the things that we do for every single one of our clients. Um, these are the most important things that you have to do to get results. Uh, a lot of these things are overlooked, even with companies that are actually marketing for you. You know, you obviously as a business owner, it's very difficult to touch on all these areas, especially if you're doing it yourself or you don't have somebody in your office to do that. And so you often look for marketing agencies to provide this type of service for you. The problem is most of these agents uh, agencies will cut a lot of the corners in these core areas and understanding really where you need to be optimized or understanding more about why the optimization is important, understanding more about why Google My Business is so important um, and how the um, interaction between the searcher and search engines, understanding truly how that works. Uh, gives you a better edge when you actually hire a marketing agency or if you want to attempt to do this kind of stuff on your own. So I'm going to go through really the steps or how I explain um, even to our internal employees how to optimize Google My Business. Um, I won't go into, you know, 
too much in depth with it, but I will go through the core components, what they mean, uh, tips that you need to do today to make sure that those are set. You can do those yourself. You don't have to have another agency do that for you. Um, there's other things you can expand on that I'll talk about. Uh, also, really how these other components, local directories, content marketing, blogging, social media, uh, how all those things tie in to ultimately help your Google My Business listing. Uh, and then I'll talk about something very unique that you, you know I've, I've developed over the year. I, I'm also a, a software developer over the last 10 years, have built technology to solve this exact problem. You know, everyone on this call, I assume services multiple areas, uh, especially if here in Austin, you know, there's actually 52 cities within a 50 mile radius of Austin. Um, I, I, it's unbelievable even it's saying that because I don't realize how many cities are around here. And most service-based businesses will travel up to 50 miles for their clients. So um, I have a very unique solution that we put together. I'll, how, I'll explain how that ties in to Google My Business, how that works um, to help you, um, you know, ultimately get more customers than when someone actually makes a search, uh, actually finding you. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch over. Yeah, I'll stop sharing here, John. No problem. And then you can start. Okay, Chris, can you see that okay? Yep, you're up and running. Okay, great. So one of the few things that um, most business owners or anybody who actually decides that, hey, I wanna get more visibility online, don't truly understand what Google's in business for, right? Google's in business to show high quality, relevant results to the searchers. Of course, ads and everything else, how they make their money is is how they've you know grown into the company they've grown into, but, at the base of what Google truly is, is if I go out and make a search, I need to be able to find results, uh, find uh, relevant content based on my search. So if you take that even more uh, simplified and understand how technology gives you that information, it's really a query that's matching to data. So, you know, there's AI, there's all sorts of things that are in there and technology is going to evolve. But since I, again, been doing this over a decade, the base of every search is I have a query, I need to match that to data. So how do you do that on a technology stand front, right? You have to match that data in some way, shape or form based on user input or input that has gone into your database. So if you take that mindset and look at Google My Business of how am I going to get my listing uh, visible on Google and Google is going to use queries to match that you need to look at all the elements that Google is actually showing um, obviously if you don't you don't do this for a living uh, you know it's difficult to truly understand what are the stronger pieces of your Google my business that's going to help you rank for such a keyword uh, as this such as security system installers right so when you go down and optimize your Google my business one of the major factors of anything is going to be the category. So when you set up your Google My Business, if you have not set up your Google My Business, you should. Uh, but if you have one set up and hopefully you're the owner of that listing, uh, you're going to want to go into that profile and you want to make sure you put some thought into your categories. Uh, there's a few things that I always explain about setting up your categories on Google My Business is they offer 10. Uh, they'll probably expand, they'll probably change but really you don't wanna ever put 10 categories in there, right? Uh, again, Google's in business is showing the most high quality relevant results. So if you dilute yourself and say, I do all these different things, right? It makes you less relevant on those very specific searches. So for example, um, and I use this all the time, if you're a remodeler, you're also a painter, you're a landscaper, you're a roofer, you're a drywall expert, you're a concrete, you're outdoor living, you do all those things. However, if you try to go into your Google My Business and say you do all those things, you have deluded yourself because there's companies that all they do is landscaping. There's companies that all they do is painting. All they do is roofing. So how do you uh, optimize yourself in a way for a business like that? You need to look at the root categories, right? So in this case, um, for this search, and I'll just kind of go through here, right? This is a home theater store that also offers security systems. Um, the power of how they're optimized and how they've set up is they used other data sets. Remember I talked about how a query matches to an actual data set that you have in a database. 
Well, there's elements of your Google My Business profile that are used to complement your categories, and they're called services and products. So the best way to optimize yourself on a category standpoint is to consolidate it into the most relevant one for your core business. Now, if you offer access control, you offer all these additional solutions inside of uh, you know a security dealer, you're not gonna wanna list all those as categories. You wanna go after the top one that makes the most sense. In this case, it would be security system installer is the best uh, or second best to security system su supplier. Um, those are the two best categories as far as kind of a conglomerate, conglomerate of all the different categories that fall underneath that master category. So again, categories are that top main category. If I'm a remodeler, I'm going after either general contractor or remodeling contractor. Um, and then I use what is called the services section and the product section to list off, I offer access control, I offer landscaping, um, and I'll sh explain other areas of how you can increase the amount of data within your profile that matches to that query that someone's actually searching. Um, back to the agenda piece, you know, that's one of all those different combinations that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is the single most important thing that you can do on your own without any other marketing agency, right? These are things that you can do um, that will help you get more visible on Google My Business if you set it up properly and understand that all the information Google My Business allows you to put in is what they're using to match. Now there's a lot of other factors such as reviews and backlinks and, and I'll talk about that here shortly, uh, social signals, things like that. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, um, or content signals and I'll go in through a lot of that here in just a minute. Uh, but the single most important thing is what Google allows you to put in yourself to match that profile. Um, so again, service area, I mean, services and products is where you're gonna expand on your categories. Limit yourself to three to five categories if you can. Make sure your top category is covering all of your subcategories. Uh, you know, in the security industry, you know, I'm looking at it right here. You can look at any, any you probably are already set up on this main category. Um, such as security system installer. This is a best example that I can show you that someone is offering security systems and security systems may not be their main business. Uh, so if you're a dealer that's in that situation, you should stay true to that main part of your business and use the additional data sets within your profile uh, to optimize yourself or add more data to your profile that matches how people search. Um, the worst thing you can do is try to go and set up another profile for security systems with the same address. Uh, you may get away with it temporarily, but more than likely they'll ban both of your listings. So I wouldn't try to do that. Uh, some other tips that I, I like to bring in, you know, you'll see these listings and there's a lot of them out there where it's, hey, you know, it's Austin Security Cameras is a company name, but it's not really the company name. That's a, t a, a tactic. Uh, traditionally used by legion companies and things like that you know obviously the name of your business should be the name of the business here there's some other pieces of this optimization that are also extremely important um, phone number right phone number and this will segue into uh, the local directories and local citations and i'll come back to the importance of that and how they connect but as you go through make sure your address is uh, obviously the right address um, you know don't be afraid to not show your address. There's service area optimization that I'll talk about here shortly. So, you know, if you have a new address and you wanna keep that address that's in that city, that's fine. Um, but you gotta make sure everything on the internet matches that. So here's some of the problems that you have, and this happens all the time. You, and I'll give you an example here in Austin. Austin's, you know, obviously the, the place you would want to be optimized for. And if you have a location in Austin, you have a map listing for Austin, that's great. The second you move out of Austin, well, you're not going to show that address again on your website. Uh, you're probably going to update that address on other websites. So you're, you're losing that connection. And what I mean by that is when you go into an actual profile, Google uses several different factors online to validate this address. Um, and it, this is a service area address, so it's not actually showing the address, which is perfectly fine. But if you are using your physical address, Google will go out 
and find all these additional what are called local citations. These are going to be websites and they'll show you a few of them on your profile. You'll, you'll be able to see what kind of matches you have. You know, in this case, we got a match for their actual address, right? This is the address, even though they're not showing the address, uh, they have connected, they know that address because you put it in, they've connected that address here. Now you get better connection rates if you have address match, phone match, and company match. You know, that's going to give you a much va more valuable uh, local citation. It's going to give you a better backlink. It's going to give you a better um, chance of using that piece of the data to help your rankings. Uh, there's other websites that you'll have links on and mentionings of your company and, and things like that. And of course, they're using uh, those cities that are referenced in there. So there's a lot of things happening there. But a, a simple way to help you be more optimized or more relevant on your listing, like I said, is a top level category using products and services. Uh, what's really cool about the products and services, you can actually add in uh, how you think people search for your product. So you can actually add in different types of uh, terms and different types of uh, what other people would actually search to help even add more data to that. So that, that's a whole nother session that we can talk about. But you know, on the baseline, make sure you have a top level category and make sure you're using products and, and services uh, to expand on your subcategories. Make sure your phone number is exact same phone number that's on your website. Uh, make sure your company name is the same way it's spelled and looks, um, you know, across all your other Yelp profiles, Facebook profiles. Those are what are called local citations. They're matches out there that prove that you're a local business. Um, it just validates your um, existence. I mean, uh, um, think of any other scenario on a referral type of program. If I tell you I'm a, uh, been doing this a decade and I own three different companies, you can believe us or, you know, at this point. But if you do a simple look up or ask a friend or somebody else to validate experience, it's the same thing. Uh, they're just using it on a data front on how you do that. And the good thing about that is you can control that yourself, provided that you know where to go out and, and update that information. So again, address is extremely important. That's the same across all your entities online. Phone number is extremely important. Um, company name is extremely important uh, to make sure all those matches. The more matches you have, the more relevancy or relevant you are. Uh, again, back to Google being in business of showing the most relevant results. That's all plays together, right? And so having that mindset when you look at your entities on the internet, uh, that's the way you need to treat yourself as a baseline, right? So there's other pieces within here that have come up. Uh, why I harp on Google My Business so much and probably wasn't uh, that much of a topic um, about all the other additional information that you had on Google My Business and using everything that they, ha they uh, provide. But because of the way people search and research your company, more and more people are not making the phone call off your website more and more people are using this profile right here to decide whether they're gonna call your business or not. Uh, they're looking at other sources, um, which, you know, not good about that is why do I need a website? <laughs> why do I need a high quality website? Why is everyone pushing me high quality content on my website and all these things? Um, the, the bad thing about that is that Google also uses that as a factor for ranking. So whether they go to your website and place a phone call or not, it's one of the major factors of whether you're going to rank on Google My Business in the map, uh, you know, to give you those types of results. So it's one of those factors you got to have, and that's not on the agenda today. But what I want to really hone in on here is this is what your customer is calling you on. So if you don't have this optimized, if you don't have this representing your brand, if you don't have the right message here, this is what they're making a decision whether they're going to call you or not. Uh, reviews are a huge piece here, right? And reviews are probably the most simple thing to get on Google My Business. You can share inside your back profile, there's a share link, send it to your clients. Um, you know, no reviews uh, is, you'll see them, you'll see companies out there that rank with no reviews, and I'll talk about why they rank and how they rank. But it doesn't matter if you have a 4.6 4 or 4.8, or a 5.0. Actually, there's been studies that have shown a 4.6 is you'll get more conversions from that because nobody's perfect, right? So don't be afraid to get reviews and show this here, especially if you do get a bad review, you have an opportunity of explaining your side of it. And customers really enjoy it. They all read, everyone reads those reviews, everyone goes through, but even better, again, it's a data holder, right? So when someone goes and writes a review, 
You know, they, here's an example. They offer great service at a great price. If that was my client and I asked them to write a review, I would say, tell me what service you did, right? Uh, they installed my security cameras on my home and they did a great job. You know, this right here doesn't provide any value other than the review. Um, neither of these, right? So when you ask for reviews on Google My Business, remember that's a data set that's being used to provide results or provide relevant re results to the person who's searching. So again, the more detail, and there's nothing wrong asking to write a review or to say, hey, you bought access control, make sure you mention access control in that review. You know, your customers love you. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to ask, you know, for them to help you out. This is a huge, huge thing for you. Not only representation when someone comes to Google My Business, but also that on the search queries. This is used within the search queries to help validate the relevancy to your business. Um, photos are a big thing, right? Um, you can get on the more technical level of opt over optimization, naming your photos, the keywords that you specifically are showing in the in the in the photo, you know, a lot of people just take photos on their phone and upload it. You can save it as a file name, right? You can save it as whatever you want. So if you're showing a security system that you installed outdoor, and that's a huge opportunity to actually just say that, uh, put that as the name of the actual photo. Um, you know, there's things like that are being used. Again, every little piece of this listing here is being used to validate your relevancy to how someone searches. Um, also, there's a new feature functionality on here that's, uh, be, again, um, there's things that you should do and you shouldn't do, right? So there's a ability to make posts. So, and this is a great segment into the content marketing side of it. When you make a post on your blog or on Facebook, or you share some content, the strategy for that is a little bit different than the strategy here. The strategy here is your opportunity. Again, additional data sets within your profile to explain all your subcategories. So again, access control, all the other things you do, uh, network cabling, uh, this is your opportunity of explaining all the additional stuff you do. So it's a combination of deals, it's a combination of what's, uh, what's new with your company. Uh, more importantly, it's about explaining your other services. So thinking of it as, hey, I, I, do, I install security systems, but I also do access control. You know, I also do smart automation, I also do these other things. This is an opportunity to reference that and link directly to content within your website that is related to that. That is the most powerful feature that they've rolled out. And, it, and again, whether they're doing this or not, but it seems like you're getting more benefit or businesses that we do that for get more benefit in the rankings uh, by leveraging that. And that may be just them trying to push, um, pushing the posting and everything else. But again, if you just go back to forget the, you know, the secret sauce and all these things that, you know, I know Google and I used to work for Google and we've, you know, cracked the algorithms and we know all that stuff. If you just look at really what truly is happening here, when I make a search online, it has to match to some sort of data that is relevant to that. And every little thing within Google My Business matches that relevancy uh, to allow you to, to rank. So, Again, there's a lot into that and there's just so much more you can go into, but those are really the most simple things that you can do yourself that you will get more exposure, more ranking. Most importantly, this is what's representing your brand. If most people are calling you from this profile, you don't want it to look dinky, right? Uh, you want to make sure it has all the right information that's truly about your business. Uh, and that leads into really where the next piece is, right? So the next habit of the searcher who comes online to look at your business does go on to your website. Uh, we can do a whole nother session on a website side, but a website is the second impression that they see about your business. Uh, however, the, um, the, I guess the habits or the trends that people are doing on searches, if you, if you track any of that nerdy stuff, they're backing out and looking at your other entities online. Do you have a Facebook profile? Uh, is your Facebook profile set up in 2007? There's been two posts over the last 12 years. You know, that's a huge thing of representing that you guys just don't care about keeping your clients up to date or customers up to date about what's going on with your business. Uh, it's also, you know, just validation that you guys still exist, right? So your Facebook profile, I hate Yelp. Uh, I can't stand Yelp. I hate their business model, but Yelp, you will see every single listing, you will see a Yelp profile as a match. It's a huge, huge connection between your business 
uh, and actually your um, uh, address, right? And so I'll give you a great example. And, you know, even in Observer, and we've had this discussion on some of these optimization, this is a lead site. It does really well on rankings. But I'll show you something extremely important about why Yelp is so important. Uh, also, Angie's List or Home Advisor, you know, these are old time directories that are just um, been used by Google over and over and over to validate the data that they have in their system to ensure that results are quality to the user. And so as you go through here, you'll see one of the huge pieces, right? Get on Yelp, same thing, Yelp, Home Advisor, um, Angie's List, those profiles, you need to treat them just like Google My Business with the most information. Again, they work the same way. Yelp updates information based on what you provide them or they provide uh, matches on data on queries based on what you provide them. So if you just go create a Yelp profile and do nothing with it, don't expand, don't put it your products, your services, don't add photos, don't spend the time to make sure you look as professional as you possibly can on Yelp, you're not gonna get this. This is a huge thing right here and, and I'll lead into the proximity and why this is uh, so important, but this is security camera installation. I, I search security system installers. It's not a coincidence that your top citation on Google My Business matches exactly a query that has been indexed on Google for Yelp. Um, if I clicked in here, I guarantee you this guy's profile is here on Yelp um, you know, within this results. And so how do you get into these results, right? So if you go through, all these individuals have prov prov excuse me, provided the data necessary uh, for, uh, for them to actually rank on this thing, for them to be in the search, right? So as you go through here within these pages, it doesn't matter what page you're on as long as you are actually located in a query with the same query that someone made on Google, that is a data connection, a data match, that is the most powerful way of ranking uh, and ensuring that you're in the, in the opportunity or in the running to actually show up when someone searches sec uh, security system installers, whatever the keyword may, may be, right? Um, so everything that you ever break down and say, okay, this is how my users search, go out, and, and make your own searches. Go on Yelp, make those searches. See if you're showing up. If you're not showing up, go add more information to your profile. You know, again, you could spend an hour or two on your own doing this, uh, these very simple tips, and this will be, you know, a, a tremendous help for your visibility. You'll get more um, brand recognition. You'll get more visibility. There's just a lot of things that you can benefit from it. Same thing on all the other, right, best security camera installers. It's extremely important to have that properly set up on the major local citations, And there's hundreds of local citations. Um, over time, you wanna build that up and continue to build that up because your competition is, especially if they have an agency that knows what they're doing. But those are the most important ones. Um, Facebook, Facebook is becoming um, a powerhouse for local searches. If you go on your phone right now and you search uh, security system installers on Facebook, you will see what I'm talking about. You're gonna see an opportunity of how they use data to show results. You're gonna see blog posts that have that keyword in it. You're gonna see posts that users have made that have that keyword in it. You're gonna see um, recommendations from companies that have profiles that have that keyword in it. You're gonna see actual local listings on Facebook. So that's becoming um, more important to be uh, optimized on your Facebook profile the same way. It's the same thing, right? You have a category, you got an opportunity to put products and services, you have the ability to put photos, you have the ability to add um, all your information about your company. Uh, this is where Facebook's a little bit different. Facebook, as far as how you share content, is a different strategy than how you share content on Google My Business. A lead that comes from Google is the most valuable lead on the planet. It's a, it's, it really is. This is somebody who's physically searching for your business or for what you offer, and they've come in through your website. You've been able to convert them in some way, shape, or form. They've come in through your profile here. They've made a place to phone call. Those close more than any lead than you'll ever get other than a re outbound referral lead. Obviously those are the best, but online, these are the best ones. You can generate leads in so many different ways online, but a Google search, someone coming to your profile and calling you most valuable. Um, obviously it's a um, return on investment from that is, is even better obviously when it comes in through organic and things like that. Right. So, but on Facebook, the strategy for Facebook 
is to complement your conversion rates on how people search. Again, there's a lot of things you can do with Facebook to generate leads, and I'm not going to discredit that. But the most important, the simplest thing that you can do on your Facebook profile is to keep it up to date. Because everyone is going to go from your business here and check your Facebook profile. See what other people are saying about your business, right? Um, you know, if you turn your reviews off, that's great. If you want to hide behind that. But again, bad reviews are not, you know, not terrible for you, right? Uh, everyone's going to have bad reviews. It's how you respond to those reviews. And hopefully you have uh, more good than bad. But, you know, that Facebook profile, the strategy for that is really keeping up to date. So how do you keep it up to date? You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can keep up to date. That's easy and simple, right? So if I just put security cameras, whatever, right here. And I just go out and click on news. There's a little tool here that you can say all news recent, let's say the past week. I can come over here and just look for an article, best dome security cameras, doesn't compete with me. Probably a great article. I don't even have to read it. I just take this little link and I throw it on my Facebook profile. And now I'm getting more conversions when someone comes to my Facebook profile. And it's providing some value because most people who are connected with you on your Facebook profile, your business profile are there because they know you do security cameras or whatever your business is. Right. And so you're, you're providing content for the audience. Now, what does that content do for you? Um, other than keep you up to date, basically that's it, right? There's other strategies on content, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. And I'll try to tie all this back in and, and um, stop throwing up on y'all as much as I am. But so the content that you share on, on Facebook, it's really just to have the perception that you're not dead and that if somebody wants to contact you, if somebody wants to say something about you, if somebody wants to refer you, you have relevancy, you have up-to-date information and you're active and it doesn't take much. I mean, you can do this in between, you know, anything you're doing out there, sharing content uh, as an agency we pull all this content we want to provide as much content as possible on the share standpoint that's relevant to your business because also when you go out and search for any business, right? So uh, just go search yourself. Google is going to show Yelp profile, Google my business profile, Facebook profile. The next step that this person is doing, once they look at your website and say, okay, Hey, I, I might call Mesa home systems. Let me just make sure they're not on ripoff report. Let's just make sure that they have some up-to-date information. So I'm going to go search them. And as you go through, this is what you're seeing, right? These are the people that are always going to show up for every single business. So if you don't spend the time to make sure that everything looks, uh, you know, in synergy or it's, it's complements each other or it's uh, the exact same, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the right information in there and everything is put in place, and the way it's supposed to be, uh, that data set on my query is matching, right? So this is, this is extremely important. Um, but again, I'm, the, I'm deciding whether I'm going to call a mess of home systems. Uh, I go into Facebook and there's nothing going on. It's a rinky dink profile on Yelp. I'm going to back out. And I'm going to look at somebody else, right? So there, that habit is, is happening right now. Uh, and it's going to be even more later down the road. Uh, especially as more and more entities are providing this type of data that makes it even more relevant for you as you search. Um, the last thing I'll cover before I go into the blogging side and the content side, uh, and I just realized this, uh, this is one piece that I missed on the Google My Business that it's just a little tip uh, that you probably would never know. Um, when you do service areas, so when you hide your business, right, and you only do service areas, if you have a physical storefront, there's other ways that you can optimize for service areas uh, within Google My Business as far as how you pr promote content, things like that. But most service-based businesses will show, you know, click the button to say, I service my client at their location. It gives you an opportunity to throw in 20 locations, right? And I'll go in a little bit more when I talk about the multi-site, multi-location pieces. But uh, one of the tips that I do have to say when you're updating your profile, make sure the last city you put in is the one that you desire to be in the most. Um, if you were to list out again, you can't do 52 cities and on Google my business, you can only do 20. It used to be more, you only need 20 and you do Austin first. And this may change, but this is just a little tip that happens and this is how you fix it. 
if you list Austin and you go all the way down, you end up at Hutto, this is what you're going to see, home theater store in Hutto, Texas, and surrounding areas, things like that. Whatever comes here on your last, the last one you put in, for whatever reason, is becoming the, what you see on mobile and what you're seeing a lot on desktop. So I'll come back to that, but I did want to throw that in. Uh, I just realized that that's actually an important tip that you, sh you, should, um, you should consider when you're optimizing your profile. So again, the, the importance of having Facebook updated is this exact reason. I search Mesa Home Systems, I go to their Facebook profile, if they don't have any posts there, if there's no activity, last thing they've done is 2007. I mean, you're not, there's so many options out there, so many great companies, you know, why would you limit yourself to something like that, right? Um, but again, uh, it's just a habit of how people are searching and why it's important. So. We covered optimization on Google My Business. We covered all adding in your services and your categories and, and all the things you need to do there. We covered local citations, which again are these profiles that are out there. We talked about keeping your social profile. And one little tip about social, there's all sorts of social media um, you know, platforms that you can get on. Just be good at one, right? And if you're gonna take my recommendation, uh, be good at Facebook. Facebook, it will be the next search engine at some point. Um, if they're not close to on how people uh, find your business, uh, there's so many other ways we could talk about optimizing yourself on Facebook as far as how you share posts and how you open yourself up for people to give you referrals inside of Facebook, especially neighborhood sections within Facebook and groups and things like that. Um, we can have a whole other session on that, but you know, Facebook, again, is, is very, very important. Just be good at Facebook. Don't worry about any of the other social platforms. Um, be good on your Yelp profile. Yelp, you don't have to update more than once, right? Angie's List, you don't have to update more than once. Uh, set yourself up with a next door page. You know, it's very simple things you can do to ensure that one, your business is represented. And also it allows you to have any kind of information that's ever been mentioned about your business pushed down because these are gonna outrank everything. Uh, and then obviously you want to spend some time on your website because you want your website to be in the number one spot, not ranking below Yelp. That's a whole nother discussion that we'll talk about on the website side. Uh, so now moving into content marketing. So this is where you get more strategic. This is more of an agency type of function. It's not realistic for a business owner to spend this time to produce enough content to have any benefit. Um, if you're a business owner and you do have time, obviously everyone is called a business owner, but if you have time to sit down and kind of give your version of what someone would be looking for on security cameras and any of these tips that I'm talking about, you have an immense knowledge of that information and that put on paper that's unique or put on, you know, on a Word document that's unique to you will do more benefit than any other agency will ever be able to do for you. Uh, because no one's going to be able to recreate what you write down. So if you can do that, you're gonna benefit from that more than anybody, than anything, right? Because when you talk about security camera installation or you explain uh, tips or explain anything about what you should look at when you're trying to hire a company, what comes out of your mouth and what you know uh, is something no one else will be able to recreate and there's so much unique and relevancy there. Again, Google uses that data to match relevancy and human beings and, and unfortunately, although I use the keyword security system installers, humans don't search that way. Humans search very specific. I'm looking for security system installer in Leander, Texas and blah, 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 right? Long tail keywords, you'll hear that terminology. So imagine if you're Google and someone's searching this very long query that's very specific, how do I match that data? And that's where content marketing comes in. Blog content is gonna cover all that stuff. When I, when I showed you that news article about the best security cameras, IP security cameras you should buy, that is gonna have so much content about IP security cameras that if someone searches with the word IP cameras in there, it, it's gonna give you relevancy. Right, and so it covers all the ways humans search for that topic, as long as it's good quality content. So what happens with blog posts? I post a blog, so Google, not to break down too much of this on a technical level, but if you just started out and you bought a new domain and bought a new website, it's gonna take you six months for Google to give you any kind of street credit to give you visibility here. That's why Google My Business is your leverage. That's why Google My Business is your biggest piece uh, to really help see or see better results quicker um, than your website. Your website's gonna take a long time, six months if it's brand new. If it's, if it's been around for a long time and you haven't done anything with it, 
you actually have the best opportunity than anybody because all you have to do is update your website with the new modern mobile friendly website and you'll have better rankings because your domain's older. But the way it works, right, Google, again, is providing relevant results, but they're also providing fresh results that are relevant mixed in with that legacy content. So you're going to see mixtures of content, blog posts, articles, things like that, mixed in with business websites when people search for security system installers. I may find an article about how to choose the best security system installer. Well, that blog content when it's fresh, ranks really, really well. It ranks quickly, but it'll die off very quickly. So because it gets old and stale and there's no backlinks to it and there's no uh, legacy um, um, or just anything that's giving it just any of that true street credit because it's so new, Google drops it. And what happens is over time, you hope that someone shared it on Facebook. You hope that a blog um, shows up on a reference on a blog, you get some backlinks to it, things like that. And then over time, that article will come back and start providing more relevancy for you. So where that little small window of when you produce content to generate leads from blog posts, you know, it's a, a week or less that you have that content's fresh enough that it could actually generate a lead for you. That's where the consistency of blogging comes in, right? So as you produce more and more content, you're having these little pockets of rankings that you, you know, are able to happen overnight because your content's relevant, goes away. As long as you're producing enough of that, you can have a steady flow of leads or steady flow of traffic to your website because you're sharing on Facebook, all these different things are happening. But on a search result, you have that small window and as long as you're consistent, you continue to get results. Um, from your content. Now, who can produce that much content for you? That's why the agency model is so great on the content side of it. But again, if you don't have this foundation set up, if you don't have all these things working together, your content marketing strategy will not be your lead strategy, right? It's a, it's, it's augments everything you're doing. Over time, it's going to help you rank more because you're going to have so much relevancy around your core categories based on your content that this is where you end up ranking when people search, right? So all the combination of that stuff truly helps um, validate your business on a ranking standpoint, but also again, back to what I was talking about. I add the very simple uh, breakdown of Google. I make a search for Mesa Home Systems. I uh, Google has to scan on an automatic basis out to all the data sets that they use to determine whether I should bring this this profile in um, to match that data. So the more data sets you have out there that have the best quality, um, you know, representation of your business is going to give you that better chance of ranking. So again, that's that's a lot. Each of those categories you can really drive down and why it's important and, and all the different steps that you need to do. As a, just again, simple, you can do this, a lot of this stuff on your own and you should be doing it on your own because you get, get to control specifically what's being written about you or what represents you. Outside of that, agencies help augment, grow that, expand on that. They help on the uh, obtaining more local citations. There's a lot of things, obviously, on the content creation and the social side of it. You know, all those things are extremely important. They all work together. You can't just do one and get your, you may get benefit, right? You may get leads, you may get phone calls, but if you did all three, you, you could have a significant more uh, amount of leads and more phone calls and things like that, uh, especially on the website optimization, things like that. So the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll cover and I'll be done with um, the service area. So we talked, I talked briefly about the importance of the service area. You have 20 service areas uh, that you have an opportunity for. So again, going back to Austin, there's 52 cities you likely service. How are you going to rank for those 52 cities, right? So we have what is called multi-site technology. It allows us to deploy a dedicated website specifically in your city. Uh, the power in that is it allows you to expand and control uh, on your organic results in an opportunity to get somebody who makes a search with the city. So there's really two types of searches that happen. So I'll go back to this example. All right, so when I search security system installers, what you're seeing, and I guess I got to go back to Google because I have too many results here. You're seeing a mixture of two different types of listings. You're seeing proximity and you're seeing optim optimized uh, listings. This person has no reviews. Um, again, probably not fully optimized. Uh, you know, more, they could probably obviously offer more. No reviews doesn't necessarily you won't rank, but you're very limited to how you rank 
And not only that, your proximity is probably the only likely opportunity you'll have. This person, I'm here in my IP address is Leander, Texas. This person's here, although hiding their address, um, not sure what the 515 number is. Uh, somehow, and again, this is not 100%. Sometimes you're going to just look at things if you know exactly what you're looking at and you say, how does this even happen? Google's not perfect. Um, but most of the time that you see somebody ranking that's just ranking there and you have no idea why, they have no reviews, no good profile, they're part of what are called proximity results. That means whoever put their address is physically closest to your IP address is going to take precedent over anybody else typically. Um, now, if there's two, obviously, then the next factor is rankings and things like that. So you have these listings that show up that are based on proximity of the address that you physically put in. Whether you hide your address or not, Google knows your address because you had to verify it, and they're using proximity based on how I search. The other is service areas, right? Service area optimization. So when you go in and optimize yourself on a service level, you really are limited on Google My Business of just listing off your cities. And really it's a pipe dream to believe that you're gonna show up in any of those competing areas, especially um, larger cities like Austin and your physical location is in, in, uh, in Cedar Park and you spend all the time, uh, all your stuff on Cedar Park and all your optimization on Cedar Park. Uh, so those are the searches in Google My Business, but then there's also what comes up here, right? So proximity and security system installers query right here uh, is skewed on Google. Uh, it's, it's why pe most people will say, well, no one ever puts a city in. So if I'm in Leander, Texas, and I'm looking for a security system installer in Leander, Texas, I may not be happy with this result, right? All I'm seeing is businesses in Austin, Texas. Now that's close enough, right? Uh, I may call. Uh, down here, this person's mentioning Leander, Texas. There's other people mentioning in here. So you're still getting this mixture of proximity and, you know, all the other different uh, cities around you, right? So you're not getting very specific. So then if I come out and search Leander, now I have a query that has to have Leander in it. It's going to show me everybody in Leander. So how do you get rankings? There's a lot of people that do this. There's, you'll see it out there. They'll build landing pages within their website. That's a strategy you can do. You can build individual web pages within your site that says a service that area. That's a good cheap um, way of doing it. But again, when it comes down to content, when it comes down to relevancy, when it comes down to uh, the data, again, how many data sets, when Google indexes your website, let's say you have a 10 page website. Well, that's 10 pages of content. 10 pages of data sets that they can use to match queries. If you just have a single page on your website that talks about that city and the service area, it's very difficult to um, compete with somebody who has a total website for that specific city. So with our technology, with our solution, um, we're able to deploy dedicated websites specifically for each city. So now you have the opportunity to rank them below the map. Uh, why that's important, there's still about 30% of the internet that click above the fold below the map. So this isn't a game changer. All of a sudden, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of leads in every single city that you ever dreamed of being in. But it's more than you'll have with just using Google My Business. Uh, it gives you that cutting edge and gives you that opportunity of seeing more relevant searches when people actually use the city in their search. And so we're able to deploy specifically every single city that you service in uh, and provide a dedicated website uh, to go back on just more of that quality content. And again, the matching data sets, more is better when it comes down to your website. More content is better. If you have a two page website, three page website, five page website, you should focus on expanding that content. You may be getting leads. You may say I have too many leads that I can possibly handle because I rank really good on Google My Business. Um, that's a great problem. Uh, but if you're like everyone else that says, I want more internet leads, you got to start with the data sets that are on the internet on what you can control, which all these profiles you can control, you can control your website. Uh, and so you expand on those things that you can have, you know, within your, you know, scope of what you actually provide as far as the data. 
But now you add multi-location, which allows you to have dedicated websites specifically for your city that just give it touches every area. And it's, it's limiting if you do service Austin, right? And you do service those 52 cities, you're limited to the cities you have based on your optimization on Google My Business. So that's about it. Uh, we're going to do a, hey, a John, Q&A session uh, here shortly. Hey, John. Chris is going to finish this up. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. So uh, when we talk about multi-site, um, that's that, that you can get into some of the subdomain subfolder type of ar architecture on the website, right? So, you know, you, you can, you can um, potentially have a, you know, a main website that's got a local reference from a subdomain perspective that'll help you out from a local search perspective too, if you're servicing multiple areas. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely. So these dedicated websites actually sit either on a folder within your website or a subdomain. Uh, the beauty of that is you now have the city in your folder of your website or the link of your website, uh, your optimization. And again, that's a whole other discussion on meta titles, mm -hmm. meta descriptions, connecting that with the content with the amount of references on a local level. But again, all those, if you just go back to the base of it, all those little areas allow you to put data in it that matches these queries. Right. And so you'd have your main website, right? And your main website would then have all your local cities connected to it. And it just gives you that opportunity of, of ranking for those types of searches in those cities. Yeah, great. Um, so if, if, as a marketer, I'm just going to kind of quickly summarize here, right, before we get into um, any official Q&A. So when, when we look at Google My Business, that really needs to be the epicenter, right? Everybody needs to start with Google My Business and make sure that they've got the core information built into Google My Business. Before we do anything, before we think about social, before we think about content, before we think about anything at all, Google My Business needs to have the main address that's gonna be represented everywhere, the main phone number that's gonna be represented, the core information that we're gonna perpetuate in all the other places starts with Google My Business. Then as Google's out there looking at all these other places, right? We take that information from Google My Business and make sure it's the same in Facebook in Yelp and all these other service providers that kind of act as reference points for Google as it's out there looking to return search results that gives that street cred, right? So, Absolutely. so, so the business owners that are out there, again, as John mentioned, Google My Business is the first place to start and that becomes a jumping off point for everything else, right? So if, if, if you do nothing else, spend time on Google My Business, right? There's a lot of other facets that go into helping build that Google juice, for lack of a better term, right? That's what, that's what we call it internally. That's secondary to, to, the, to the primary setup uh, and structure of, of Google My Business, right? And there's, there's time, there's effort, there's detail that's involved in building out that profile, but it's well worth it because then that becomes your Bible for everything else you do online. Um, you, you, you specifically, um, you mentioned a lot of great detail, but along the way, you mentioned responsive websites. That's something we don't talk a lot about, right? And can just reemphasize the importance, you know, for these guys and gals who may have older websites and they haven't really thought much about responsiveness, you know, knowing how, how many people are looking for, or initiating searches on their phone. Talk a little bit about that in terms of, in the, in the, through the eyes of Google and how that relates to Google My Business. Yeah, no, that's, uh, again, if, if I added that to this session, it would be a two hour session, three hour session because mm -hmm. of the fact that that's, it's extremely important, right? And, and just to go back to the base, right? You got that base done, now what's next? Your next piece on, um, you know, providing that, again, someone's making a call for Google profile, but they're going to your website. And that website, based on how you rank on mobile and on desktop, there's so many factors to it. So on a responsive standpoint, all that simply means is that if I'm on a tablet, if I'm on mobile, if I'm on a desktop, my website looks great. It loads great. I can read the content. Google sees that as quality content. Google has the ability of seeing what your website looks like on all devices, right? And that's a ranking factor. Uh, matter of fact, there's some other pieces to that, such as an SSL certificate, making sure you're secure. On a mobile stand standpoint, if it's not optimized for mobile, you're not showing up on mobile. Uh, the scary part about that is more, most of your searches are coming from mobile, right? Mobile mm -hmm. is, is a major, major piece to all your re 
visibility online. So if you don't have a responsive, which basically means that you're formatted for mobile, Google is not even giving you the opportunity of ranking. You'll notice if you make a search on mobile on Google and then go to your desktop and make a search, you're seeing totally different results. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all based on the ranking factors of how fast your website loads. Uh, obviously the relevancy and the content and all that, all those things still matter there, but then it comes down to the experience a user is going to have on mobile. Again, Google's in business by providing high quality results. And if your website is giving a bad experience for the users, you're not getting an opportunity of seeing visibility on mobile. Right. Yeah. And everything become, has become mobile, right? Facebook, they say they're a mobile first company, obviously Twitter, a lot of these right. connected engines back to Google are mobile first. And, um, you know, it's important when you think about the consumer experience to have that responsive website. So you're delivering the most important information to those folks on that smaller device uh, that helps you really get into that consideration set and ultimately generate that, that, that closed deal or that initial phone call, right? Which right. turns into a great lead. And, you know, and one, one thing that people may not be aware of that I think is really emphasized as you talk about Google My Business and as you're scroll, scrolling through search pages is that Google fundamentally changes over time, right? When we used to look at Google two years ago, they used to have paid search ads on the top of the screen, but then also on the right-hand side of the screen, right? right? Well, they did away with all those ads on the right-hand side and that pushed more paid ads to the top of the search results, right? Yep. So you have to be even better nowadays at returning relevant search results, which starts with the my Google business profile, right? And then having all that other related connective tissue content, uh, 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 reviews and all that stuff to show up higher in those search results, which means that you're um, not further down the page. So if you're not really good, you're going to be below the fold. You're going to be on page two or page three, just because Google is an inherently push those organic search results lower on the page, right? Right. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny is 20% of the internet clicks on paid ads and most of them click back out. So your percentage of paid ads and your conversion actually is way less. They thought that that was going to help push more revenue for them, which it has. They do get some more click throughs, but the actual search that comes back to that business comes back on Google My Business, right? So, um, you know, paid is not, it, it's a great source of generating leads, but it's not the only option for you, right? It needs to, yeah. you need to have this organic play because everyone knows what an ad looks like and yeah. more and more people are going to use your Google, Google My Business profile. Um, two years from now, you're just going to have so many companies that all they do is Google My Business, right? So it's, it's a big thing for sure. Right. Well, I know you've covered a ton of information, right? And I'm sure there, there are folks out there who joined us today whose heads are swirling a little bit. Um, you know, as, as a uh, company that is really built around our dealer business and, our, and supporting our, our dealer partners and making sure that they're successful, as most of you guys and gals know, we've got a uh, marketing business enablement platform in Alibi Arsenal. We've leveraged some of the technology that, that John's team has built as, as we talked about, he's not only the, the owner and, and, and operator of several agency, but he's the developer first, right? He's kind of a code geek first. We've partnered with him and so in the, in, uh, we've built Alibi Arsenal on some of this incredible technology that allows you to um, take advantage of the, the content marketing, the social connective tissue, the, um, the, the Google My Business profile setup, which like we said is the epicenter, should be a number one priority for any business owner before they do anything else. But once you get beyond Google My Business, there's a lot that we do through Alibi Arsenal that helps you have that fresh content, that recency factor that Google's looking for out there when it's looking in all these different places, whether it's social, whether it's looking at your website for fresh new content that helps you rank higher and, 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 get, uh, and get returned as part of those relevant results within, within Google. So if anybody out there is interested in learning more about Arsenal, again, it's built on the backbone of this awesome technology platform that John, that John has, has built as an expert, uh, helps our dealers get set up quickly, manage their ongoing content, uh, digital presence in a really effective manner reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you more about how we can make marketing easier for you guys. Marketing is not fun for a lot of small business owners. As you guys are, you know, out there 
uh, selling, quoting, bidding jobs. You want to sell, you want to install, right? That's how you drive your business. But ultimately, it all starts with leads and in, in, in getting found in the right places, getting found in your local uh, service area, like John said. We can help you make sense of a lot of the marketing aspects using this technology backbone, and it's super affordable. We've got a dedicated team that's ready to talk to you about our ally arsenal solutions. Um, so, so please reach out. And we've also got an Alibi Arsenal uh, YouTube video that's out there on our Alibi Security YouTube channel. It's available 24-7. If you want to learn a little bit more about uh, Alibi Arsenal, we recommend you view that. Uh, we've got information on our website as well. So anyway, enough of the sales pitch for, from, from the marketing guy. Uh, we appreciate you being with us today, John. It's, it's, yeah, no problem. It's, it's a complex digital ecosystem that I hope you've uh, helped make a little bit of sense of for the folks that are out there today. Um, and we'll look forward to uh, talking to you soon. And hopefully we can queue up another marketing session where we can deep dive into one of these topics that you touched on in the future. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Appreciate All right. it. All right, John. Yeah, we, we appreciate your time. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Absolutely. All right.